Okay, what we're looking at is naming alkenes and alkynes. And as we write the names, we will figure out where all the numbers come from and where the name changes come from that make these different from how we name alkenes. Now, go ahead and give it your best shots. Okay, we're close, but no Cupid all. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this? There's no methyl. There's no substituent. All we have is the main chain. So get rid of your methyl. Okay, and the two, erase it from where it is because it's too far over. All right, let's start from scratch. First of all, we put up the number of the first carbon that touches. Now, the next name is the same name as the alkane would be, only we have to make it an E. So that part you had right. And that makes it a hexene. Okay? So it's the two hexene. This two right here is because this guy is carbon number one, two, and he's the first one as we go from one to two, he's the first one that will touch that double bond. And that's why it's a two hexene. Okay? Uh-huh. Okay, now we're gonna see how to name letter B. Methyl three heptene. Great. Perfect. Now let's see what, what, what all these guys mean now. This this guy right here, the three tells us that this bond right here is on carbon number one, two, Three. And let's let's circle this main chain. All right. So we go in one, two, three, and that number three carbon is touching the bond. Number four is also touching the bond, but three is the first one as we come in from the number one end. And the, the double bond determines which end is going to be number one. So even if we had a methyl out here, Okay, on carbon number two, the triple bond, this guy is going to trump, which means that the number one has to be on this end because this guy is closest to this end regardless of any other substituent. Okay, so that's an important concept to keep in mind as you're looking at these and you want to determine who's number one. You don't have to look at anybody but the double or the triple bond. Okay, now we're going for letter C. We're going to see what this little dude is going to be named. Okay, she's naming her substituents first. And the ethyl comes before methyl. So ethyl is first in line when we name the substituents, just like with the alkanes. 5, 6, Di because there's two methyls, and those methyls are sitting on carbon 5 and 6, and it's a 3-octene. Now, would you circle the longest chain? Okay. And that's it. Okay, and which carbon is number 1? You want to number that? Okay, and why have you chosen number one to be on the left side instead of on the right? Because the double bond is closest to the left side. Double bond is closest to the left side. And so she has numbered carbon one correctly. And that is why this, this, this naming system that she's used is perfect. Okay, any questions? Raise your hand if you didn't get it. Okay. Where did we lose you? Are you okay with the length of the chain? Yeah, the 5-ethyl. The 5-ethyl, okay. Let's look at this and let's see why we call this ethyl as being on number 5. Here is the ethyl. Let's circle the substituent. And here is the methyl, first methyl, and the second methyl. All right? Okay. So, since ethyl is on number 5, 
and ethyl comes before M of methyl. That's what we're comparing. The dye has no bearing on how we alphabetize. Was that your question? Yeah, okay. So you'd think that dimethyl would come first, but it's not. Even though D comes before E in the alphabet, what we're really comparing is the M of methyl to the E of ethyl. That's how we get our, our alphabetic order. Is that what was your own question? Okay, well, that, was, that one's easy. <laughs> Anyone else? Did, did we lose anywhere? Come on, now's the time to learn this. This is the easiest time it'll ever be to learn this. Because you can ask a question. Okay, there we go. Yeah, now we're going to do letter D. See, yeah, circle the longest chain. All right, let's go ahead. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Not the longest chain. Okay, good question. Hold on. Just relax. There you go. Right. Okay. So, go ahead and erase the whole thing. Here, let's put this down. Okay. All right. There it is. <laughs> kind of. Okay. So, we have now identified the longest chain. Now, lose carbon number one. Okay. Go ahead and mark him number one. Yeah, wherever. Okay. Now, what is the name of our substituent? And what carbon is he on? <laughs> no, the, okay, number one, okay, your number one here is not a substituent, this is not a substituent, this guy right here is your substituent, okay, you see it now, you see what you circled was the main chain, whatever's not in the main chain is a substituent, Okay, we've got to mark, we've got to mark this guy as being on number one, because the carbon is the first one. Okay. Okay, we're going to give another student a try at this. So let's start by circling the longest chain. Okay, we've got the longest chain. Carbon number one is. Okay, number it. Okay, so far so good. Now, can you tell us what the substituent is? Uh, isopropyl. isopropyl. And what carbon is isopropyl on? Five, six, four. Four. Okay, go ahead and get started. That's your first name. First part of the name. Four. Isopropyl. And why is it isopropyl instead of propyl? It's bonded in the middle carbon, and as we look at this isopropyl, it's made like this. Okay, this carbon right here is the one that's bonded to the main chain. The other two are coming off, this guy and this guy, come off of the carbon that's bonded to the main chain. Is that making sense for you? Okay, let's go on. And how long is the longest chain? Good. And what number is the triple bond on? One. Okay. So it's a one, which tells you where the tells you where the triple bond is, and the Y in here, heptine, tells you that this guy is a triple bond. The one tells us that he's the first carbon to touch him is number one. Okay. That's how you do your eins and eens.